And hi, Aloysians. I'm tempted to say, how's the Josh? But I don't want people to believe that I'm from a political party. Okay? So, you had two sessions in the morning, right? How are they? Good? Did you enjoy? Yes. Did you get positive environment here? Yes. yes. So, very thankful to you all for giving me a good reception. Ma'am is here, so thank you very much, ma'am. And uh, I hope you respond very well as you responded to the previous sessions. Um, so, first of all, let me tell you, I come from different capacities, right? As the introduction said, uh, I'm an entrepreneur, a basketball coach, working for MNCs, general manager for an MNC. So, you may be, you may be wondering what questions to ask this person, right? So, what would you want me to address myself as? An entrepreneur? Good enough. How many come from business families here? <coughs> Parents are businessmen. How many would want to become businessmen one day? Or businesswomen? Okay, a fair number. Right? Uh, I'm very thankful because I'm one of those few privileged people to have spent 17 years of my life studying in Ambrosius College. Right? So, whenever I come home, it feels like you know, the extension of what I used to have, you know, you happen here. So, this is a new room, a fantastic experience. I don't know how many times I have uh, had sessions here, but this some, seems to be something new to me. You know for what? Can you tell me why? Haven't you come here with your own motivation? Has someone pulled you here, said compulsory, be here? All of you have come with your own will, right? You had to pay a small amount as well. For entry fees, good. That, that is nothing compared to what you're going to get here, right? So, please give me positive energy and I'm going to give it back to you. So, if I go on narrating my old story, it is going to be one of the most boring stories you'll ever hear. Because, I, you know, I come from a very middle class family. But then, when I came to my primary school, I understood that my kindergarten studies was not that high level. So, I got into this group wherein there were a lot of people coming from fantastic kindergartens, spoke very good English, could draw sun, could draw diamonds, could draw all sorts of things. But here I was struggling to say ABC. I was finding it very difficult. That continued for a very long time. When I came to standard 8, <coughs> I realized I had this big problem of stammering. It brought my confidence down so low that I couldn't even interact in English properly. So it was all in Konkani, my uh, mother tongue. When I came to class, people used to laugh at me. So I never used to utter a single word in English. I used to be in my own cocoon, never got the courage to come, come forward. And uh, thankfully, one of my best friend's father happened to be my English teacher in Standard 8. So he asked me one question. John, I know that you have a problem with stammering. I said, yes. Would you like to speak properly? I said, yes, who wouldn't like to? This, all this conversation was in Konkani, by the way. Then he asked me, if I give you a challenge, are you willing to accept it? I said, why not? If I get an opportunity to speak better, why not? Then he gave me a simple solution. If you accept the challenge, tomorrow onwards, I am going to give you one page of this English book to read about. Deep within, I had a Shakespeare in myself because I could read properly. I had absolutely no problem with reading. But when it came to reading it and giving it out to people, it was very, very difficult because of the confidence level I had. It was terrible. All time low, zero. Then the day came, the teacher gave me a book in my hand and he said, please come forward, John. And I used to be one of those few people who used to sit in the last row. And you know how last rows are, isn't it? What happens in the last rows? What? Yes. We come from a batch wherein we used to make a mockery out of every single lecturer who used to come, teacher used to come. Okay, throw papers around, you know, uh, play all sorts of games, write chits and send it forward. I used to happen all the time, right? So when I walked through that aisle and I came forwards and I looked back, 
the sight was something like this. Every single eyeball was looking at me, wondering what's happening here. This bugger hasn't even spoken a word in class. What is he doing with the English textbook? Right? And what was the challenge? To read the entire page. I came here, I stood like this, I did not even have the courage to look up. And then it started, one by one word. I struggled to read three lines in five minutes. And what was worse, even the people who I thought were my best friend started laughing. Enemy is fine, forget. The ones who do not care about you is fine. But the ones who used to be with you, act like your friend, started laughing. And that hurt me the most. Five lines, six lines, sir said, please go back. Okay, he thought he couldn't take it anymore. Send me back. I came back home, didn't utter a word, sat in my room and wetted the entire pillow with my tears. My parents didn't know what happened. But deep down, something told me. What was that? The challenge which I gave, accepted. And sir said, he had the faith in me. And you go and start reading it out. Based on what? My confidence. There was a question which was asked. Do you want to improve yourself, right? And I said, yes. So that was hitting me hard. And I was a person who used to take challenges. I got back again and I said, come what may. Even if I have to go and make a mockery out of myself, doesn't matter. I'm going to go forwards and start reading. The next day I came, I'm not going to say it worked very well. The same thing happened. I came in front, started talking, people started laughing. After fourth or fifth day, the laughter was reducing slightly. So one day I asked my friend, buddy, you were laughing at me, right? Uh, so was the entire class. So why are you all gone so, so, so silent, you know? What's happening to you? He said, not because of that. Not because I've become a fantastic reader. It is because you have the guts to stand in front and speak. Whereas there are other people who know everything, who can say everything, but you are the one who is showing that character. So we are all proud about that. So go and do the same thing. And here you see the result. What do you think has changed in me? What do you think has changed? Would I have changed if I hadn't met that person at that time? Would it have changed if I had come home, said I'm not going to do the same thing again? Would it have changed? Now I have got the confidence to stand in front of anyone and talk. It doesn't matter. How many people have weaknesses, some kind of weaknesses? I'm, I'm sure most of you may have some weakness or the other, no? Is there any person in this room who doesn't have any weakness? Doesn't have any weakness? Not a single person, right? So acknowledge that. So what is the first thing you can do? Encourage others. Haven't you had weaknesses and people just did not allow you to come out and say a single word, in, you know, in fact laughed at you? Hasn't there been situations where you have been demotivated? Now you're sitting here. First question you ask is, who is this person standing in front? Is this story very inspiring or is this story very boring? In fact, you have got the choice to either accept this person as the best person in the world or you got the chance to say, no, I'm not going to listen to him whatsoever. Right? When I grew up slightly and I came to ninth standard, I used to play football. Right? And then the chance for representation of the state came by. But then I also developed a keen interest for basketball. So then my PD came and told me, why wouldn't you join basketball? Because you got the height. Ninth standard, I was not in the team. Tenth standard, I started playing. In fact, I even became the captain of the tenth standard team. Never looked back. Developed something called as an ego. Never knew how to speak English. Tenth standard, I came and started speaking so fast that people couldn't even understand me. And there was a different dilemma here. I came out, people were just listening to me for two, three minutes. And after three minutes, they were like, what did you just say? Why did that happen? I had an influence of these people who used to do commentary on TV. Most of you watch WWE. Most of you watch EPL, La Liga, such tournaments. And worst was what you used to hear on the radios. 
Have you heard of radio commentaries earlier? How are they? If you watch cricket commentary, it's almost like something is happening every time. In fact, he's defending the ball on the front foot. You know, some things happen like this. And I was so influenced by that, I, was to, I used to assume that this is the way to do it. 10th standard. That was the first time I went to work with my father. As the sir said, someone had lost his keys here. Whose key was that? Yeah. Our primary job is to duplicate keys for either your vehicles, okay, or your door locks and stuff, stuff like that. We have an ancestral firm which has been there from the last 115 years. Okay. So we had a small shop which was 26 square foot in dimensions. Do you know what 24 square, 26 square foot is? How big is it? It should be this big. Right? Now when I sat in there, it was not the premise that attracted me the most. It was just the fact that my dad had the skill to do so many things which used to look like a you know, magician at work. I put myself into it, developed a keen sense of interest. My dad never stopped me. When I came to PU college, I used to spend a lot of my vacations at the workplace. I used to go play basketball in the morning, get tanned, immediately come home, wash myself and immediately go to work. Then I had already taken up PUC science. You know how science is, isn't it? How many of you are science students here? Wow, huge number. Right? I had taken up PCMB for one reason. What was that reason? What was that reason? <laughs> Prestige. PCMB you feel like the king, isn't it? You feel like the king. And other people give you so much of bad knowledge. Saying, you know, if you, get, if you take this up, you will get the entire options to work with. You will become like Einstein. Okay, you will, you will go into space. All sorts of things. It fascinates you. Moreover, it was not just that. It was even accepting the fact that other fields are not that, you know, that lucrative. But deep down, there was a businessman in me. And in PU college, my father asked me one question. Would you like to get into business? Or would you like to get into an engineering field? Because we had an engineering wave that time. If you understand what an engineering wave is. Everyone, every small boy who came through, 10th standard, had only one question. Which branch of engineering will you take? There was no other question. And one more thing which was very misleading was, teachers used to come to class and say, if at all you take up diploma courses, or arts courses, or commerce courses, you'll end up being getting that job, you know, which no one wants. You'll become a mechanic. You'll become a bus driver. You'll become that. and you'll People were petrified by that. Were you told this sometime back? No, but in the, our time, that was very, very much in, uh, you know, demand. All these kind of things depends on the personality that you are. If you get less marks, you'll be there. So it scared me off. In PU college, I decided I will write my CET. And my father just sat with me and asked, see son, there will come a time where you will be asked for the consequences of your choices. See, this is how our business is. You will be blackening your hand. You will look like a mechanic. People may come to you one day and ask you, what are you doing here? Did you get a job outside? In fact, even now, after doing so many things, people come to me and ask me, why didn't you go abroad? Why are you with your dad? Why are you working with your dad? Such kind of things. And anyone from business family would recognize one thing. You will always be compared with your predecessors. Don't you think so? Don't you think so? You will always be compared to your father. You will be always compared to your grandfather. Such things will happen. So what is required? What is required? Are you the same as your predecessor? Are you the same? You have your own identity, right? So when I came into uh, PU college, I just narrate a small story to you. I had two friends. One was a fantastic academic student. Always used to get 90% and above. B did his M tech. Okay? And this boy, the engineering boy, he met me probably six years back in my office. 
and he said the one thing john do you know this boy so, uh, so long we met him in college after that we've never been in touch so do you know uh, this boy has given me terrible times now asked him why what happened see we studied so hard in college and i happened to finish my mtech i went to dell company okay uh, as an engineer after two or three years i decided to change my job i went to accenture when i went into accenture the person who took my interview was this fellow you know how this boy did his btech and then mtech and joined the company another friend of mine did his arts then came into college this very college did his ba studies then went and did his msw and he got into an hr job where in accenture so it was almost like he was slogged it so hard and then what happened to the second boy was he more lucky than the previous one isn't it yes or no yes, yes. so what does this story tell you should we be confident all the time yes. have you heard of overconfidence yes. has anyone come and told you you are an overconfident person yes. is there something called overconfidence no. No. how many say yes how many say yes who says there is no overconfidence okay i'll give you an example i am trying to climb mount everest okay and i'm totally confident i will do it whether i do it or not depends on my preparedness depends on my ability <coughs> depends on luck you know but then if i don't get there am i overconfident you have heard of usain bolt sprinter yes now he had a record 9.69 later he better that record he made it 9.58 in sprinting people looked at him and said this fellow is totally over confident was he over confident no. so does that mean the ones who are running with him are over confident to run when they know they're going to lose to this fellow most of the times yes or no yes. so if you have confidence it is a feel good factor now i had a feel good factor of coming into business so then whatever happened around me did not matter to me absolutely did not matter i was not worried about what people will come and tell me okay whether people are going to laugh at me or not there was just one thing i will be facing the consequence of my decision see in life you will face situations wherein you have to give priorities now how many of you want to go abroad settle abroad study abroad okay now in our time there were a lot of parents who used to settle in the middle east yes gulf dubai abu dhabi qatar kuwait and all that now what is the biggest problem you will face now in the coming future are you having the same number of jobs available for expatriates who come from abroad do you it is coming down drastically isn't it so what are you supposed to do now why do you think there are so many people of engineering background of some other backgrounds coming into agriculture have you heard the stories agriculture it professional comes back home starts an it this one agricultural sector starts a business in agriculture sector why do you think they do that do you think they are incapable of extending their uh, professional life what yes or no they are planning for the future and what uh, is it a conducive environment for agriculture now yes or no what's happening what's happening is there a real labor problem problem with labor yes but what are these engineers going to do they are going to get a lot of mechanical improvements done they are going to create a scenario wherein there are less number of people required to do such kind of business they are going to get the loans they are going to get the subsidies they are not looking two or three years down the line they are looking much more than that probably 20 years down the line 25 years down the line 30 years down the line okay and when i started off business i also had an mba background 
and I also was a sports person. So one day, the ex-principal, he comes to me and says, John, we would like you to be our basketball coach. Okay, because we do not see any other person who is in the locality who could improve our sport. I just gave it a thought. I was just 20 years of age then. 22 years of age then, sorry. I said, fine, no problem. I will come here and do it. The next thing that I find is, people are embracing the way I motivate them. Now, is there uh, anyone who can motivate you when you don't want to get motivated? You come to some place and say, I'm not going to listen to this fellow, what come in? Will they be able to inspire you? There is only one kind of motivation, that is what? Self-motivation. If you are ready to put your foot forward, there are people who will help you. That's what I thought. When I came in, I had this natural ability to push people. Push people to such an extent that I get a response from them. And I also discovered one more thing. Not all people are the same, isn't it? When you come into a sports field, especially when you look at those great coaches, how many of you follow football here? Regularly? Okay. It is the most watched game in the world, isn't it? Now, you see a lot of very successful people coming and not delivering. What is the problem? What is the problem? Do they know how to manage teams? Yes. But sometimes, one three-letter word comes in between. What is the three-letter word? Someone said it here. It is ego. I developed a great sense of ego for one thing. In second year PU college, basketball captain. 10th standard basketball captain. Degree college, basketball captain. So what happens? You feel like a king, especially when you're in Aloysius. Nowadays, change, things have changed a lot. But in my time, you have a tournament here happening, the entire gallery used to be full. And you used to feel like a king. All the baskets will go in. You make all sorts of things, you know, gestures to the crowd. You know? So ego comes in between. But the biggest problem for me was the company that I had. I used to be hanging out with people who are in terms of finances much more lucrative, much more richer in terms of economics. And deep down I knew this was not the group which is going to take me forward. And one day one incident happened. In the final year valedictory, a boy came to me and said, uh, John, do you recognize me? You look like a familiar face. I said, yeah. Uh, you are so and so. Uh, he said, yes. Do you remember those days where in 10th standard you used to sit with me and teach me English? Because we had that initiative wherein we used to get these Kannada medium people together. To improve their language, we used to sit with one or two of them and you know, converse with them in English. So he said, you did this to me. Okay, and I'm very thankful to that. So, do you remember that we were in different batches in BU College? I said, I didn't even meet you after that. But do you remember that we were in the same class for all these three years in BBM? I said, were you? Really? Because 50% of the times we were out of class for basketball practice and such kind of things. Uh, I asked him, why, why didn't you come before, before this to meet me? He said, I was intimidated by you. I said, what intimidation? I thought you were not supposed to be approached to. You had the different thing, you had that ego. I was not understanding what this fellow is talking about. I came back, I sat at home and gave it a deep thought. And suddenly I realized it was true. Because all those people I used to meet before, I'm not meeting them again. I had made a small group for myself who I used to hang out with every time. Then I decided one thing. If I have to sustain in business in the future, I cannot do this. Can you be a successful businessman by having ego? No. You need someone or the other. I have not seen any solitary person succeed in business. Can you succeed in business? At least you need people around you, isn't it? You need customers. So <laughs> if at all a person says, I want to become an independent person, does it mean you are isolating others from your life? I decided on one thing. From today onwards, I will treat ego as a different person as me. Ego is not me. It's a different person. So either I satisfy my ego or satisfy myself. 
then on I started at least giving that person that importance. When I meet someone rarely or every now and then, I just make sure that I smile at them, say hi to them, have a quality conversation. That was not rubbing on rubbing onto me. I started becoming a different individual altogether. Even when I was at work, I was never, you know, comparing myself to my father. I said, yes, this is my identity. And I was a strong believer in that. See, if there is anything we can do, we can provide positive environment. Not trolling someone, not discouraging someone, not making a mockery of someone, disrespecting someone. To a large extent, it worked. To a large extent, it worked. So when we came into MBA courses, we had started from zero and started doing the small projects. How many have already started doing some kind of projects or at least know what you're going to do after college? Anyone? I was at AMIT the other day, Aloysius Institute of Business Administration. Okay? And I was very happy to know some people have taken up entrepreneurs' projects. Like what? Hostelites. And what is the biggest problem boys have usually? Food, laundry. Clothes, laundry. Who has to wash it every time? So there were two boys who invested and bought a washing machine. Okay? And every week, they used to take so much of money from these people, lend them the washing machine, ask them to wash it. These fellows had made a profit of 60,000 by the end of two years. Just by knowing what was required. Yeah? And another fellow had taken up the responsibility of running the canteen. The canteen was already there, took up the management, took up the manpower, started doing business, made a profit of more than 2 lakhs. So don't you think these are very innovative ideas? England. Where did they go and win? It was in England, isn't it? Yeah. At Lord's, the final was. So, the English press was feeling so terrible that they wanted to get back at Indians somehow. The problem was, India was ruled by England for such a long time. Okay? And they felt like their own servant has become their boss. It was a slap on their face. So they thought at least in the press meet, we'll make a mockery of this. And what is Kapil Dev's biggest drawback? He doesn't speak English. He used to make a murder of English. He used to kill it. Okay? Literally kill it. Okay? So then, he picks out one good person. Who is that person? Naujo Singh Sithu. Why? He was the only person who could speak good English at that time. Because his father was a master's in arts, literature. So he says, hey junior, come, let's go for a movie. He drags him to the press and goes. And the press is filled with such kind people, you know. Big guys, English guys, Gores. Three people are sitting on the dais. Kapil Dev, center. Siddhu to the left, manager to the right, team manager. Manager doesn't know to speak English either. <laughs> so, Siddhu has been conned and fooled and bought here. So, he's not knowing what to say, what to do, nothing. So, he's asking Kapil Dev, what am I supposed to do? He says, Kuch nahi pa ji, jo kuch mein bol raho, aapko English mein bolna hai. Aur jo kuch wo bol rahe, mujhe Hindi mein bata do. Okay? Whatever I have to speak in Hindi, you translate it to them. That's all. So, Siddhu starts profusingly sweat. Why? It is not a problem telling Kapil Dev what they are saying. But what Kapil Dev is understanding and what he is saying is a big problem. <laughs> Isn't it? So, he's sweating and sweating. He was so nervous, if somebody had touched him, he would have died. <laughs> Naturally, a nervous person, but good English. Okay? Haven't you come across such people? You have, right? Okay. Then after about 5 o'clock, the bell rings. One person stands up. Huge guy. 6 foot 5. He says, Mr. Kapil Dev, this is Mr. Brian from the sun, he says. Kapil Dev was like this. He looks up. This. Huh? He says. Mr. Brian from the sun, Mr. Kapil Dev, he says. Huh? Oh, tell me. Okay. So he asks one simple question. From a land of a billion people, why can't you have one more Kapil Dev, he says. From a land of a billion people, why can't you have one more Kapil Dev? Kapil Dev is looking at him as if something has hit him. Right? When he looks at Siddhu, Siddhu doesn't even move an inch. He's looking down. 
after about four five times they know this fellow has not understood not understood anything so he is going to give you a ridiculous answer anyways so they keep on asking keep on asking after about five to six seconds kapil dev stands up actually not supposed to stand give an answer sittingly with nervousness he stands and he says ladies and gentlemen siddhu is telling him there are no ladies only what ladies only <laughs> He must have heard some speech before, ladies and gentlemen. So he would have thought, hook or crook, you have to. Okay. Then looks at him and says, uh, My mummy is 58 years old. My daddy is dead. How can you have one more Kapil Dev? <laughs> the entire media loves. Entire media. Was Kapil Dev confident or not? Was he or not? There are two things which brought him out of this situation. One is confidence. Second thing, humor. Now, as I see, people have lost their touch of humor. Only thing you do is, you know, Manav Lewis uh, Sir talking about the social media. You know, sit on uh, social media, you get all sorts of trolls and memes, isn't it? You have a great laugh. You have a great laugh. That's it. But the capacity of having the humor at the right time will get you out of many, many situations. Should you react or respond to situations? Tell me that much. Should you react or respond? Yes. See, you go on the road, you're driving properly, and you know how people ride in Mangalore. It's much better than how they ride elsewhere, but that's what they do. And you know there is no fault of yours. People will come and bump into your car. Or there was one or two incidents where on, we are going on a normal speed. There are people with suicidal tendencies. There was an instance, 11 o'clock in the night, we are coming back from a wedding. And someone is walking on the road, tries to jump on my car. What will you do? What will you do? There was a very terrible incident wherein... This was an incident which I have been given permission to talk about. Since I also do counselling in a large capacity. This person who came to me was a boy of a father who was having a terrible time with finances, undergone huge losses. So he had decided to make a big insurance, one crore of insurance. Why? Because he knew in his lifetime, he is never going to recover that money and pay those people who he had actually accepted those loans for. So he starts an insurance of one crore. The next year, he had planned to go and just kill himself in the road accident. Insurance have clause wherein you cannot commit suicide. If you do commit suicide, you're not going to get insurance. That's the rule of it. Now, this man goes in his car full speed, tries to come under a lorry. He was so lucky, the truck hits him in such a way that he comes out unscathed. He has a leg fracture. That's it. He survives. Good luck or bad luck? What is it? Bad luck? Good luck? If you look at it from your goal point of view, what is the goal? Suicide? From there on, it should look like an accident. From there on, insurance money will come. At least my family will be at peace. Okay? At least my family will be at peace. Did he succeed in doing that? It didn't succeed. But what had happened is, a lot of people who did not even come and ask him what had happened, came to meet him that day. And he had a loan of about 30 to 40 lakhs. There were people who came and said, okay, if this is the situation. He never told that this was my intention. Just because he was helpless, lying in the hospital, people came forward to help him with his finances. And what happened? Four or five years later, they recovered out of the situation somehow asking people for money and this person of the pledge to pay it back. All those things happen. Now children are doing well. They have got